Rub up your engines! Today I'm going to talk about production quality of vehicles and what you see may not be what you get. Now this is a 2007 Toyota Corolla that was bought for $2.01 three years ago by my customer. As you can imagine, $2.01, it was a family deal, basically giving them the car. Three years later, it still runs pretty good. No matter how you maintain or don't maintain a Toyota Corolla, as long as you keep engine oil in it and don't overheat the engine, they can basically last indefinitely. Now sure, the homemade paint job leaves a little to be desired, and the license plate is held on with a pair of vice grip pliers covered with ice, and the side view mirror is held on with the mechanic's helper duct tape because he ran into the side of the garage, painted wheels, and we've got a minion on the front hood, but unlike many other economy cars, these Corollas are solid built. Take a Chevy Cruze. I had a customer with a Chevy Cruze. The first 80,000 miles, two of the automatic transmissions went out, and the third one was on its way out. And heck, in his 14-year-old Corolla, the power door locks still work. Check it out, even in the ice. Now it's got the usual Spartan Corolla interior, and we'll start it up here. This one's a standard. Look, it's a racing Toyota Corolla, all souped up. Well, actually, the pipe under there going to the muffler is rotted off. He asked me, hey, Scotty, I kind of like the way it sounds. Is it going to hurt anything like that? Now, of course, over time, if you have the exhaust off like that, the check engine light will come on, which is on now. The car will probably run a little bit on the lean side, and over tens of thousands of miles, it can do some damage to the engine. But on one of these Toyota Corollas, I've seen people drive them 10 years that way, and they still run good enough. Plus, this is Clarksville, Tennessee. No inspection sticker. Soldiers here at the 101st Airborne, they're all driving fancy cars that they've straight piped and take the mufflers and catalytic converters off and they're driving around. They're not inspected here, so you can drive them all you want. If you lived in an area where you had to have a muffler and have the emission stuff, yeah, you'd have to fix it, but it's not that big of a deal. The pipe is rotted away. You could weld on a new pipe or you could just buy a pipe assembly and bolt it on. It's not rocket science. And under the hood is a bulletproof one point. 0.8 liter Toyota four cylinder engine, which happens to be the same exact engine that's inside my Toyota Matrix, only mine still has the beauty cover on it. And I mean exactly the same, they're both the same 1.8 liter four cylinder engine. Basically, Toyota Matrix were originally called Toyota Corolla Matrix. This is just Toyota Corollas with a different body style. Now, this one might be the worst for wear, but it still runs fine. As we start it up, starts right up. Of course, it's got noise from that pipe, so you don't want to be asphyxiated. We'll crack the windows a little to let the air flow through. That's the only real downside of having that hole. You don't want to get carbon monoxide poisoning, so roll your windows down if you're driving a baby like this. And don't ever put it on recirculated air. Put it on fresh air so it's sucking air from the top up here and not having any of the vapors come up from the bottom. Now being a Toyota Corolla, still got killer heat. Everything works on it. Now it doesn't need maintenance required. Well, there's no biggie on this. Just turn it off and push the reset button down here and it will reset itself. When you turn the key back on, watch. You can see the lights gone. That just automatically comes up every 15,000 miles or so to get you ripped off to go to the dealer so they can charge you for things that don't need to be done. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of the truth. It's a sales gimmick is basically what it is. Now it may be noisy, but it goes on down the road. Power steering works fine. It tracks straight. It doesn't pull or shake. And it's actually not a bad ride. It takes the bumps decently. Brakes work perfectly fine. Don't make any noise. Now it's not a race car, even though it kind of sounds like one, but it does have a standard transmission. So when this car passes by, we'll give it the gas and see what happens. It's spinning the wheels. Too much power. <laughs> well, at least too much power today because it's icy on the road. But on the other hand, with that icy road, you can see it didn't even skid all that much. They were solid built. Especially if you get one for $2.01. You can't look that gift horse in the mouth. All in all, this thing still runs good. And if you want it to be quiet, well, just take your foot off the gas. When it's just cruising, it's not too bad. But as soon as you step on the gas, it's a race Corolla. Now, I passed the road test of flying colors, but you can see 
It does have the check engine light on and the airbag light, so let's get the scan tool out. We just plug it in, easy to get Tony's Toyotas. And it's got six trouble codes. Oxygen sensor circuit, which doesn't surprise me at all, because if you got a exhaust missing, it's going to mess with that data for sure. Name code for a different sensor. They're all oxygen sensor codes so far. Okay, then it's got a code for the computer, another oxygen sensor, and another oxygen sensor. None of which surprises me, because the exhaust has got that big leak and that messes with the oxygen sensors then the computers are going to get weird data sometimes it can even trip that it's got a problem which it has in this case got the airbag light so let's go to seat restraining system see what that's all about so it's got a code for the front airbag sensor on the left side and another code for the front airbag sensor well guess what this baby's in 07 has got those stupid Takata airbags it was probably never taken into under warranty if you have a car like this all you got to do is get the VIN number call a Toyota dealer and they'll tell you no we haven't fixed the Takata airbags take it and they'll fix them for free you can unplug the fuses if you really wanted to yourself so you don't have to worry about them blowing up but you know I would never do that as a mechanic it's your car you can do what you want with your car and of course like I said you get the seat belts you buckle them in they work quite well race cars don't have airbags they got seat belts yeah they're a little fancier but still you can even get this fixed free probably because it's got the stupid Takata airbags back in 07 but not just for giggles we'll look at the live data and as we can see See here, it's really not doing that bad, even with the exhaust coming off. The short term fuel trim is 4.7% and the long is 2.3. That means that it's adding a little bit of fuel. See, Scotty guessed right. I told you, when the exhaust comes off like that, you got a big hole in it, it often makes the engine run somewhat lean. The fact that it's adding 4.7% fuel shows that, yes, indeed, the computer thinks it's running lean because that hole in the exhaust is making it run lean. So it's adding a little fuel to try to make it run right. And it runs perfectly fine so even though this thing's been used and abused it's still running pretty good <laughs> it just shows the overall build quality of these things and this particular one wasn't even built in japan new united motor that means it was built in the united states and here you can see the original color of the car it was originally a red car not what it looks like today now like i said if this was a comparable car american car like a chevy cruise i'd say the noise what it looks like it's time for the junkyard not this thing it might go another 10 20 years i would fix the exhaust myself i get my welding i just get a new pipe and weld it on it's not that big of a deal you got any monthly shop and have that done on but like i say the kid kind of likes the noise it's like a racing corolla now beauty's in the eye of the beholder isn't it so now you know looks can be deceiving in a car the inside can still be really strong if you're messing around with a toyota corolla regardless of what it looks like on the outside and here's some bonus questions and answers. Edie's Cole says, My steering wheel squeaks when I turn right or left. Seems to come from inside the cab. An 07 Tundra with 175,000 miles. It's been 10 degrees below zero here in Minnesota. Great show, thanks. As they age, things wear, and often the plastic stuff will rub and then squeak. If you want, you could spray some WD-40 around here. That doesn't hurt electronics. And maybe the noise will go away. But if it's 10 degrees below, that is really cold. And things shrink, get closer together, the rod shrinks then they get closer together than the plastic parts that are a tiny bit apart on your steering column touch and squeak so you might spray a little it's typical do look under there and make sure that that big old universal joint under the steering wheel where it connects to the power steering assembly under the hood there's these universal joints make sure they're not worn but they don't squeak they generally will clunk so try some wd-40 that's that cold outside your car's going to be making a lot more noises than that probably <laughs> I'm looking to get another car used. Here are my choices. 05 Buick LaCrosse, 93,000 miles. 03 Saturn View, 190,000. 2004 Volvo S40, 115. 2009 Cyan XP Base, 105. 2008 Mercury Grand Marquis, 94. 2006 Mitsubishi Endeavor. Okay. Well, I throw all the other ones out, and I would look at the 2009 Cyan XB and the 2008 Mercury Grand Marquis. Now, if you don't care about gas mileage, get the Mercury Grand Marquis. They can run a really long time. 94,000 miles is nothing. Now the Scions XP can be good vehicles, but you got to make sure you're not buying one that's got 2.5 liter four-cylinder engine because those often turn into oil burners. 
I would not buy one if it was that year. And the Grand Marquis, they can run forever. Now, forget all the other ones. They're either probably going to be overpriced or too many miles. Like, you're not going to buy a Saturn View with 190,000 miles on it. No, stick to those two. The Scion or the Grand Marquis, depending on what you want. They're completely different vehicles. Little bitty Scion or a big old giant Grand Marquis. Worst gas mods, decide what you want. Have a mechanic check them out either. Way. Whatever one you pick, have them check it out first. Who knows what shape they're in until a mechanic tells you. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.